us. Right? Yeah. I mean, it was not disclosed to us. And um, another thing is, is we were one of the first houses on the street, and so each subsequent house that was built, they built higher. And mm -hmm. that was the problem is it wasn't coordinated very well to get everything drained downhill. It was this person's going to build lower, I'm going to build higher, no, I'm going to build higher. And now they've got a whole subdivision right behind us. They dumped six feet of dirt in, and they're all draining to us, too. Um, and thinking of cease development until this problem is fixed. Well, and another thing too, there's supposed to be, a, I went on DNR site checking this out on swales. There's supposed to be, um, the swales supposed to be determined by an approved model. And there are three approved models, a manual method, what they call SLAM, SLAM, and, and a P8. Were any of those used when this was done? Yep. Which one? I don't know. I Can we get that information? Sure. Okay. And I think we need to take a look at that, and then as far as after the model's been determined for the swale, then you can figure out the infiltration rate. And um, designs are usually supposed to have a, um, should be half the rate for the appropriate soil listed or calculated in the DNR standard 1002. And I just want to make sure that the city took a look at all of this when they were um, designing that swale. I was a little surprised um, granted, we've had a lot of rain. We had a lot of dry time, which the ground became very hard, and we had talked about that. And so when the first rains came, they really couldn't infiltrate right away. They were just piling up. And But it's a little scary to me as a resident that water could, if that square was supposed to be 12 feet wide and handle, the water between the two retention ponds, why it is now 30 feet and better at certain times with these rains. And I do know that when I was in Arizona, instead of a grass or turf, vegetated, I guess is the word, swale, they would put in not a culvert per se, but it looked like a cement U. And it was in the ground and the water would go down that and it had a place to go versus trying to infiltrate into the ground. And with the water, label, water table is so low there, I'm surprised that we tried this with the infiltration because the water can't go anywhere when we have these large rains. There's no runoff. I mean, it's just not running down and it's not emptying, you know, which we thought it would possibly do. And I just want to say, we, live, we actually moved. We live on the other side. We own that house, but we own another house in Emily's on the other side. Of we don't have a drop, a drop of water in our yard, not a drop. So I know what you were saying earlier, that you traveled to Madison, and I work in Madison, and I work in Batesville, and I travel this. I have never seen the flooding that I have seen on South 6th Street. We live in Evansville. We don't have it. I bet none of you have the flooding in your backyard. And I bet uh, you don't either. Yes, we do. I, I have my cup all the running. <laughs> But not I, the way I do, so not, not much but I got level ground, I'm not near correct. Yeah. But my stuff pump is running when we got four and a half inches, then we got four and a quarter inches. But the fact is, we live on the other side of town, they don't have to go out and drop. We don't have the problem over there. Why so it's a problem with designing. It's, it's, it shouldn't happen. It's not working properly. You need to raise your standards. And I think the swale actually is working. It drains, but the, the structures and places for it to go on your end it's are the parts yeah. that are not. It's just, going, it's just going out in the back there and it's just sitting. I mean, the guy that's the farmer out there, I mean, if I didn't even have the swale, that thing, it would have been the lake. I mean, it it is totally flooded. I don't know where it's going. I mean. Dave, um, we've talked uh, about the 100 year standard and, and uh, That or you know, a hundred year event or something like this. We looked at what's happened over the last hundred years, and you suggested that maybe we're getting more intense rain events recently. Um, do we have any way of looking at a shorter period of time to see what the worst event was in the last twenty years, or and design for that um, rather than looking at a, a hundred year average? Uh, if you know, if, if the intensity is going up, we ought to be looking at what's happening in the most recent time period, not what, what happened in 1907. 
Well, it all comes back to, uh, you know, I would say in the last 10 years, things have really changed. And I've been, I've been uh, doing this for a long time, and the last 10 years have been a lot different than mm -hmm. the 20 years before. Me. But I don't think, I think mean, I talked about this four years ago, three years ago, the whole restriction for this whole west side is, is the bridge that front row. Mm -hmm. You know, there's only so much water <coughs> that can leave the area. And we have 300 acres or so in the west side. There's another 1,500 acres of farmland that comes through the same drainage way, and it goes through the same culvert that crosses Crop Row. And until that bridge is enlarged, and you know, you can't just go and enlarge that bridge because what happens from that point downstream from there. Um, you have to look at this on a regional basis. And I don't I don't think you should uh, you know it's not just a city thing. You know it's a it's a regional thing that we all have I mean if we have fifteen hundred acres of farmland I can guarantee you that there's there's a there's water coming off of these fields. It's not just you know just city water. I mean if you could pay the water, there's a lot of farm uh, water coming down the same drain away. And it has to go through the same calder across the property. In tonight's paper, it said that the, uh, the James Bowl said 10 inches of rain. The record, the record is 10.8. So we've had more rain in the month of August this year than almost ever before. And it all came within a couple of days. Though we didn't have any rain in the month of July, and we still had a bunch of time. The time has to get fixed. I, I agree 100% with that time. We have to fix that time. What that fix is, we'll figure that out. We're going to do something like that. My question, you know, that has to be There's um, one thing I noticed this morning on the south side of Porter Road. Something must have failed there last night too, because if you look at the curve, it's told on the south side, it's totally full of sediment. That means there must have been an enormous amount of water moving across Porter Road to dump that dirt there. If you look at that curve, like I said, the south side of Porter Road, there's the sediments up to the curve. And the other thing is you guys gotta think about looking totally out of this. Is water is going to be a big commodity. And what the one person said here, we were dry in July. And there's, you know, if there's a way you guys could, I don't know, make a bigger pond or whatever. So there was a collection so the farmers could use that water. Because <coughs> outskirts of Milwaukee, they're already having problems. And on the Milwaukee side, they're not going to pump any more Lake Michigan water out to the suburbs. So you guys got a commodity here, and we're just basically uh, throwing away it's over. The south side of Porter Road, where, where is that? What are we talking Right at the... Right, almost diagonally across that, uh, that pond by the, the dry pond by the bus depot, the school bus depot. Okay. But I noticed when I drove up there this morning to see what, what happened to the rest of the neighborhood, it, it was really peculiar to see sediment all the way up on that curb. I should answer that. They so put, a, so they put some dirt in there to drive off there so they didn't break the curb. We'll have to take that off. That's what you're talking about. Is that what it is? That was put there so that the, when they were mowing the weeds, so when we go up over with the equipment, we're not tracking down the curb. I know what you mean now when you're talking about. It. It's kind of kitty corner from the bus, from the pond there. Right. On, on Porter Road, on the south side. Okay. Yes, Mark. Uh, I keep hearing that we can't widen the bridge because of the concerns of what we do south of us to Magnolia, but it seems to me that we weren't given the same consideration because we're in the same town. This happened about three years ago after several hundred houses went in north of Porter Road, and, and that's when all the problems seem to be gone. But just to emphasize what I said earlier, regardless of whether it's Abby's fault or Westfield's fault, it, it was all signed off on by the same engineer. And uh, I, I wonder when we're going to look at when we're looking for a new one. Uh, to me, it, 
what I'm hearing here is that there's a tremendous problem of water on the west side. And part of the, uh, I don't know if the word argument is the right word, but the, one issue is that, that this has been an extremely large amount of rain, the 100-year event, and that that's kind of the defense for why you have so much water on the west side. That, but yet I'm hearing that in 2004 there was an issue, and in 2000 or 2001 there was an issue. So there appears to be a problem. Now, some of us here weren't here at that time. That doesn't change anything either. The city, in my opinion, needs to address the issue. Our engineer has some explanations as to what the, the basis for that development was, and it was based on 100-year events. Well, we've exceeded that, apparently, or matched it, and maybe we've matched it in a four-year period. Uh, a hundred year event isn't designed to only happen every hundred years. We could have a hundred year event four years apart and then maybe we won't have that again for 200 years now. We can talk about how much rain we've had and, and how much rain, rain we may have, but we've got a problem and I think that the personnel that the city has to work with, they're aware of the problem, we as a council are aware of the problem, uh, there was a discussion that the houses are built too low and we can't jack all the houses up. But it would seem to me that maybe we've got a 100-year event, uh, the engineering, we need a 100-year engineering event. This is out of the ordinary. I think we can direct personnel within the community and the city to address this abnormal situation and figure out a way to, we can't raise the houses, let's figure out a way to lower the land. Or let's figure out where the water's flowing. We've got an opportunity here. We've got a hundred year event. We've got a real opportunity to see something that is unique and address it. Um, as a council member, my, my goal is going to be it, to get the, the people that are involved and their duties are to deal with this, to deal with it. Uh, it may involve getting the town of Magnolia. If, if we widen that culvert and crop road, we're going to dump a whole bunch of water somebody else's problem. So it may take more than just this city to address the problem. Um, but we can talk all night about, well, this was real rare and we engineered up to this amount. Um, I, I think we're aware of the questions that were brought in previous years that maybe weren't addressed or maybe we thought would be addressed by engineering to the 100 year event. We've got an opportunity here, don't you agree, Dave? But this is unique, and we can take unique measures to benefit from what we're learning from this. Um, sit here all night and say, you got, you tell us you've got problems, we tell you we engineered to a, to a major event. Well, we need to tweak that a little bit. And I think that's our goal. I think it's Dave's goal. Um, saw 6th Street, and just by watching the last year, they're developing back there. I mean, is there any, is there any... To the west of you? Yes, yeah. to the west and, I guess, west... South, west, yeah, so north, north, all around Hasn't there been kind of... And uh, they've been digging there? back there forever. And, you know, that could be affecting it, too. Who knows? I, you know, I... But the rumor has it they're putting single dwelling family homes back there. There's some I mean, the west or south, south that's been stopped because of the water level. Mm -hmm. So is that that could be another cause for the flooding problems back there, the drainage. You know? I, I don't think this problem is necessarily <clears throat> unique to just South Sixth Street. Um, obviously the water moves. Sure. And it it's just collecting it. And that's the real problem. But there's problems up the street as well. Um, I think there's flow issues from from the top down. If you stand at the intersection of Garfield and Sixth, which is one block north of Maine, you can look down that that street and it just it slopes down. 
I mean, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, as we put, to see that there is gravity and flow that's pulling down that way. Um, we've had torrential rains. Um, I didn't hear from anyone here that they had flooded basements. Did anyone have flooded basements here? I did, actually, and I'm at 6th and Main. Sub pump couldn't handle it. Um, I have a little more of a slope behind me. I kind of, it, it doesn't stay there for a long time, but when it comes, it comes pretty good. Um, I get standing water, it's only there for two days. So I feel like that's pretty lucky because of that. I don't think our issue is um, flood basins. I think our issue is that we are neighborhood of children. Right. And we're worried about children drowning in fatalities. Well, that's not a concern. I think that's there, a valid but, concern. But other that's concerns remain. You know, I think absolutely. Um, I think you know, the safety of the children. But other people have made <clears throat> the, the concern about their foundation and everything else. And I think we're, we're hearing all the concerns up here. Another, another thing with that pond, too. I mean, we do have, there are a lot of kids in that neighborhood. And I see them playing over there all the time. I think maybe the city should put a fence up around that thing. Yeah. Just for that reason. I hate to see my child go over there and play over Sean's. Well, from the road out of the city. And you're talking about that little mm -hmm. pod yeah. that, that, that yeah. almost yeah. looks like, well, it almost looks like it should have been a lot at one time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. right in between two houses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. I think what, what Dave talks about the farmland, I mean, this water is coming from up by County C and, and, and right. over anywhere north of there. Obviously, it's north to south. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's that huge, I mean, there's a huge agricultural drainage ditch right to the west that just goes right. It's we just haven't it done that our yard. That's, that's we put streets in there. We put a, a lot of stuff that used to just be farmland that there's a lot of water out there and just was out there. I, I grew up on, it's been a small part of my uh, childhood, on a farm that the driveway was at the end of Main and Fifth. And that was just our all our back. It was Lee Ringham's farm. We lived on the house there, bailed hay back in those and where all these people live. Um, if if one of the major problems is the, the bridge and the culvert is crop road, obviously that's not in the city. The water starting up north of, of Evansville is coming down. We, we need to work together, obviously, with county and township and, and you folks. I think, I think we're aware of it, and I, it's my intent to, to stay on top of what's happening about it and, and see if it can be resolved. I mean, everything else that we've done as a, as a, as a community, as a county, as a state, as a, as a nation, we've accomplished some pretty amazing things. I think we can figure out how to deal with this, although nature is a tough, mother nature is a tough one to fight against. But well, at this particular point, uh, Mr. Sauer has indicated that there's at least a couple of things that we can do. Uh, I'm going to put this uh, topic continuously on Public Works agenda from here on out to make sure that there is, at the very least, some sort of accountability from a <coughs> representative standpoint. Um, anytime that there's any information, they, you all think that we need, and you don't think that the right people are getting it, I invite you to come to Public Works anytime and let us know. Um, now the first one, we've, we've got Public Works coming up here in just a couple weeks. It's going to be on the agenda, and at that point I think we're going to talk about um, for sure where we're going with this, what can be done in the next couple weeks. Now a couple weeks is not a very long time, but um, I anticipate by the end of September that we should have some definite answers and at least make some steps to get this in, into a better place. Um, Do we have anything in place for emergency plan? If we get a 3A rain, all those houses basements, it's going to be in the basement, no doubt. And that one house says, by the retention on <laughs> people won't have a basement. So what I'm asking is, does the city have sandbags? I mean, we call the fire department when that water, because like, if we have a three-day rain, a hundred-year event, three-day, it's, it's coming in. So, 
again, does the city have, you know, like the people down in Mississippi, you know, fire department, they come over and we start building sandbags? I think we're going to start working on that for sure. That's also on the agenda as of right now for public works. You can start dredging the lake. <laughs> there you go. We use hand shovels, you don't have to buy a permit yet. <laughs> Is there anything else anyone would like to say tonight? Thank you for listening. We do want to listen, and you need to tell us so that we are aware. Um, for some of you who said you've spoken before, I heard it first today. And, and to be fair, I mean, we're not the same council that was here in 2000 and 2004, so we need to hear this stuff as well. I certainly wasn't hurt. I have a concern. I'm at 531 South 6. We're right next to the Greenway, which is 75 feet into our property when it rains, and even today it was in our property. You have been kind enough to put our electrical box up on a stand from the last flooding. But if that, if our electricity goes out and our sump pump can't work, we're all going to be flooded on fifth in our basements. We're not wet yet, but with that much water, how wide is that waterway supposed to be? I'm assuming not into my yard, but 75 feet across, it's like a river. It's like the Rock River it's when we get that water. It's over 200 feet from edge to edge on that corner. And I. We did go up Porter Road that night, that Tuesday night. It was pouring. The water wasn't coming through the V too much. It was coming alongside that ditch yeah. and pouring into the creek. Ten times more volume coming out of the ditch than coming through that V. Easy. I, I, mean, I don't know if that's how it's supposed to work. All I know is there's a lot of water coming out of the ditch and not through the, that V. And I know that it needs to go slower, perhaps, so we can drain before they drain? I don't know. The ditch was on the corner right? Yes. That's where I was coming from. Yeah. Right up. It wasn't so coming through the ditch. To the, when you're looking, so the front on, if you're standing on Porter Road looking at it, on the right hand side, you know, there's you know, three foot wide on the ditch. It was over, you know, coming into that and just barely coming through the deep. So I don't know if something can be done to direct it into that retaining pond so it comes through the V at a slower rate so we get a chance to drain on our side or what? But that was a lot of water. And the 6th Street pond they're talking about, our 6th Street Lake as the neighborhood calls it, that was overflowed into the street. It was over the curb that day. So we, we have some major it's issues. It's a volume control. Maybe if it was slowed down we would have a chance on our side to yes. drain. Yeah. I don't necessarily think it's a design issue as much as a volume issue. We got to regulate the volume, personal opinion only. And, and I know it's a hundred year plan and all that, but we've been here four years and it's happened every year we're here. So that needs to be taken into consideration. I have yes. just real, real quickly. Um, sure. Based on every, what everybody's saying, um, I urge you to really scrutinize the uh, water flow issues for the new development that's going in behind us. I know there's a plan in place, but we really, it really needs to be looked at to make sure that that isn't compounding our problem. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's hard to say, with because we have had a lot of water, and I know the light's getting long, and we want to wrap this up, but really, really scrutinize that with that new development so that this doesn't compound the issues that we already have. Thank you. You have brought information to us tonight that we did not know and it is important that you keep coming and telling us and we do want to listen yes well i mean we heard about last week uh, today but i mean we heard about that. That's what I told right. you about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, things like this event, I guess is what we're saying. We, you know, I received calls, Dan received calls, um, Alderman received calls. I made a list of who called me. 
I'm sure Dan made a list of who called him. Um, we heard from a lot of you in the last two weeks. So, but but I got a call about your particular property today. So that was the first you heard? That was the first I heard, personally. Okay. So, um, I, I um, lived in Milwaukee 20 years. I had my basement flood for storm water, with storm water problems four times. I understand it's no fun. Um, and, and we want to do the best that we can for your neighbor. We really do. So keep coming with the information. It will go on Public Works. Come, listen, give us your input. We're willing to listen. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.